Welcome to Bar Chart's weekly series of webinars designed to help you, the investor trader, better understand a variety of trading ideas and concepts, as well as the pages and tools Bar Chart provides to help you make a more informed investment decision. Today's subject, a deeper understanding of candlestick price theory. Now, imagine if you will, you wanted to go to the beach and your favorite secluded spot is underwater at high tide. So you consult the tidal charts to find out when high and low tide are. And maybe you only go to the beach as the tide is rolling out from high tide to low tide. Now imagine price movements of markets in terms of tides. Price rolls in on an uptrend, then it turns and rolls out on a downtrend, pauses, slack tide, and then it rolls back in on an uptrend. Now, does the tide go from low to high on one wave? Of course not. It moves back and forth on increasing momentary larger waves and pauses for a bit on smaller waves. But it does eventually make its way from low tide to high tide. Well, market price action does the same thing. Hello, my name is John Rowland. I'm Bar Chart's Head of Trading Education, and today we're going to look at candlesticks, candlestick patterns, and to give us some clues to where price is in terms of these high and low tides. But also, is price rolling in on an uptrend or rolling out on a downtrend on what I like to call the cycle of price? So today with me is my partner and our moderator, Ms. Jean Baker. Hello, Jean, how are you today? I'm good, how are you, John? I'm doing well, thank you. Are you surviving the weather out in the Midwest? Yeah, it's hot, hot, hot out here. <laughs> hot, 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 August yeah. hot, yeah. I think how about on East Coast? Yeah, same things, hot and humid, right? Well, it'll be September soon enough and we'll start thinking about fall and winter, so. You know, we always complain what season we're in, and when, we're, when it's gone, we're always wishing we're, we're in that season, though, too, right? <laughs> yeah, let's keep summer around for a little bit, all right? I agree, I agree with you. I agree with you. Excellent. All right, so just to remind everyone that um, today's uh, webinar is for educational purpose only, and that any of the markets that I'm going to look at are not should not be construed or as an endorsement to buy or sell. All trading has risk and that we at Bar Chart recommend that you consult with a financial professional to make sure that you are able to bear these types of risks and your financial situation. And also just remember that past performance is not indicative of future results. Okay, before we get started, I want to kind of remind you guys that today's webinar is based on some previous concepts that we put forth in our prior candlestick webinar that was recorded um, back in July. And so I'm gonna to go to tools here for a second and their free webinars. And I wanna show you where that former uh, webinar is. And there it is down there. It says understanding candlesticks from July 14th, uh, 2021. And the reason why I'm showing you this is if we go below the actual webinar link, you'll see something that says here, webinar slides. So a lot of the concepts that we're going to discuss today are found in these slides. And you can open this slide up, this slide deck, and you can see um, the data that we had put up for you, this reference data. And it basically goes into like some very basic type candlestick patterns, but not only that, but you can go in here and look at a different pattern and you're gonna see what it kind of looks like, um, what that pattern is, and you'll also get a real world uh, example. So let me slide this down a little bit there. There's a real world example. Now, if I go back to my main site, if I go into stocks under the candlestick pattern 
page, we also have all those patterns that we talked about in that past webinar. And what you can do is you can click on the stocks that are exhibiting that pattern for today, and you'll get a little description up here on top, but also you will get uh, view that example. And that example is one of the files that is inside of that larger um, a file that we have as a reference. The other thing you can do is you can go through tools into the site education and just type in candle and search. And there it is, understanding candlestick charts. Notice though, to today we do have our webinar that we're doing today, this deeper understanding. And so when you click onto that, you would have the opportunity to download or look at uh, those slides that are going to be presented today. So those will be available for you uh, at the end of today's session, okay? All right, so let's go back uh, to our um, slides and talk about this history or theory of candlestick. So, right. We talked about in the past is based on um, uh, the teachings of a 17th century rice trader, and that really what we're talking about, the candlesticks, helps us visualize these battles between buyers and, sell and sellers, right? right? And then that candlesticks really are reliable for us. They give us greater confidence, especially when we're determining trend reversals or trend confirmations. Now, Today, though, we're going to take this to the next step. We're going to start recognizing or these certain types of formations, candlestick formations, or a series of these candlestick formations could confirm or alert us of these tidal trend changes, right? This kind of series of price rolling in and rolling out. And finally, one of the concepts we also talked about in the last one was the importance of openings and closings, that we need to wait for a candle to close to give us that price confirmation, right? But also what we're going to look at today is we're going to build upon that is that we can use these opening and closing prices or these areas where these candles are opening and closing during our regular trading hours to help us find some greater opportunities in terms of entries and exits. So this, these series of formations, right, this uh, formations is something I like to call the cycle of price. And, and what this is is a price theory that the market moves or market movements, our impulses and our corrections, can be defined into four phases. The first being something called a rally-based rally, excuse me, rally-based drop. And this is where price rises and then falls. Second, we have a drop-based drop. This is where price is falling. Third, a drop-based rally. This is where price is falling then rises. And finally, our fourth is rally base rally. This is where price is rising. So what we have here is we have two phases where price changes direction, reversals, rally base drops and drop base rallies. And we have two phases where price is trending, trending up, rally base rallies and trending down drop base drops so each phase represents or confirms or tells us there's a change in who's in control our buyers and sellers right the trend or price action of a particular time frame that we're looking at right will tell us who's in control based on this series of these candlestick formations. But what we will also discover today is that these formations will repeat or be similar. And in defining who is in control, right, 
we will find these patterns throughout all time frames and that the same context or phase of our cycle of price is going to help define our trading opportunities. All right, so let's look at um, a little bit more detail on these different four different phases, okay? So the first phase is that rally base drop and price rises and then it pauses or stops moving up and then it falls. And so you can see to the left, there's a variety of candlestick formations that are types of rally based drops, bearish engulfing, dark cloud, bearish harami, uh, bear kicker, evening stars, shooting stars, hangmans, and dojis. Now, these are not exclusive. There are other formations. These are just the ones that we have in our data file for you to look at. All right. Drop base drop. All right. Price starts to fall. It base. And then it keeps falling. And again, to the left, you see some candlestick formations that are typically found in drop base drops bearish for army uh, falling methods hammers inverted or not um, three candle connections and again dojis a drop base rally price starts to fall or is falling it based and then rallies up Again, there's some candlestick formations, bullish engulfing, bullish piercing, uh, three candle drop, kickers, hammers, morning stars, haramis, and again, our dojis, all right? And then our final phase is a rally base rally. And here, what we see is that price is going up, base, and then continues. So let me go back to the beginning here. All right. Now there's a reason why I present these in this sequence, right? There is a sequ sequinality to price, right? What we will discover as we go through our process today is that price will move from each one of these phases and it does it in a very sequential manner rally based drops price rises and then falls will lead to drop based drops falling prices prices will continue to fall and then prices will stop falling and then start rising again to a drop base rally and then a drop base rally where price has fallen and started to rise up will lead to a rally base rally. Prices will rally base rally, rise until they stop rising, rally base fall. And so this is the cycle of price. And what is important for us to understand is as we go through our demonstrations, we will see this cycle as price moves from high to low and back to high tide. Okay, so let me go to the dollar index, and I want to start here in a futures market, and the reason why I want to do that is there's a couple of reasons. First of all, candlesticks are more complete uh, in futures markets because futures markets are, tend to be open for longer period times in one day. Um, then let's say equity markets, you know, 23 hours or 18 hours, depending on the futures market you're looking at, versus the equity stocks are only open for six and a half hours. And the second is because the dollar index itself is a composite index, six currencies versus the US dollar. We're going to look at another composite a little bit later. But what I want you to just take away is that there is a benefit from looking at futures charts because our cycle of price does play out in all of our markets stocks futures forex etfs 
it's just a lot easier to see in these markets where they're open for longer periods of times, futures and Forex. Okay. So let me pop this out first so we get a nice big picture so you guys can see this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at a high time frame. I'm going to go to a three year and notice that it is a weekly nearby. And I'm just going to slide this over a little bit here. All right. And let's just make it a little bit bigger. Okay. And imagine again what we just talked about this cycle of price this as price rises and falls and falls and rises right and you can see that really you can see it all the way back here right starting all the way back here right price is rising right rally base drop and then it starts a cycle of drop base drops drop base drop drop base drop drop base drop and eventually it falls down and goes drop base rally and then rally base rally and then a rally base rally leads to a rally base drop and a rally base drop leads to a drop base drop base drop base drop drop base rally rally base rally and you can see this really easy and this is why i started at the dollar index we can see this tie this price change of price rolling high and then rolling low and then rolling high and then rolling low and rolling high right rally base drop drop base drop drop base drop drop base rally rally base rally rally base rally rally base drop all right so let me go to current price action and let's make this nice and big for you guys okay and again i'm on the weekly chart and again you can really see this cycle of price right so we can look back here right drop base rally rally base rally rally base drop and now we're starting to think about candlestick formations and this rally base drop is a bearish engulfing right one of the types of candlestick formations that are found in rally base drops right there okay and then price falls falling trending trending down drop base drop drop base drop and then a base area where price bases and rallies and then it rally base rallies until eventually it comes back to the origin of this sell off now remember what we talked about in candlestick formations last time is this is where we see our market has gone from buyers are in control to sellers are in control and then prices has returned to where we know that sellers had established their control. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go to a smaller time frame, and I want you to keep in mind a couple things here. First of all, these two shaded areas right here, when we look at them, and then when we dive down even to lower time frames, I want you to keep aware of these two blue lines. This is where we're going to find, this is with the transformation of price from buyers uh, to sellers. All right, so let's go down to, now I've gone down to a six month or daily chart. You can see that daily chart right there. And again, here's our two shaded areas. Now notice that our bearish engulfing rally base drop that we saw on the weekly time frame is not the same formation, but the result is still the same, right? Rally base drop, and in this case, what type of candlestick formation is it? Well, you know, we could argue that this is a hangman or a shooting star, but it certainly is where price has gone up pause and started to go down now what is the next cycle after a rally base drop well a drop base drop 
a drop base drop, a drop base drop, drop base drops. And eventually what we start seeing is the market starts cycling back and forth in shorter intervals. This could be a sign to us that the market is starting to find buyers, maybe scale down buyers, right? Some drop base rallies, some drop base rallies, but price is still making lower highs, which is telling us we're in a downtrend. But eventually we do make a drop base rally, drop base rally that leads to a rally base rally. And this rally base rally is where price broke out of this basing area and then led to a series of price actions until we eventually got all the way back to this area where sellers were in control. Now, let's go back and go down to an even lower time frame. And as I do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna concentrate on this area and we're all gonna start talking about this area. So there's our circle, right? And remember, what was price doing? It was rallying up, right? From all the way back down here where that we broke out of that range and eventually came back to the area where sellers had been in control the previous time. Let me make this nice and large so you can see it. And what do we see? Well, as we come into this area where sellers were in control last time, just like we saw as it turn from down below low tide now we're getting towards high tide and we're starting to see candlestick formations that are telling us that there are sellers right hangmans there's two nice little hangmans here and matter of fact this is kind of a double top but yet price is still making higher lows it's still in an uptrend and matter of fact price is respecting those zones those areas where price as buyers were in control, a rally base rally, price respected that. But we made two tops here, and then price fell, rally base drop, and then price drop base drop. This is a drop basing action. Some of you would notice that as being a, a bear flag, and then price broke below and broke our uptrend. So who's in control now? Sellers are in control, right? The buyers are gone, sellers are now in control. So as we move to the right here, what we can see is when price cycles back, this will be an opportunity for us to look to take some short positions if that was what we wanted to do. Or if I had been long this as a long-term trend, once this drop base drop was established, that might have been a signal for me to exit that position. All right. Now, moving forward, right, we can see that we do have these little micro cycles. But notice that price comes back and tests these rally base drops. Right there, tested right there, came back and tested it here, came back and tested it there. But yet sellers are true to their form and sellers were there and price was pushed away. Now what we're doing here is we've moved to that green area. And again, let me remind you what it looked like on our chart. Here we see price has fallen in a cycle of drop base drops. We've fallen into this green area, this kind of basing area. And there it is. Let me make it nice and big for you guys. All right. Oops. Don't want to move that. All right. Now what is price doing? So we're in a 60-minute time frame here. Price is cycling back and forth between low and high time in the 60 minute time frame. And if we were going to describe this in terms of trend, 
I think all of us would agree that this is a sideways trend. The market is not going up, but it's not going down. And you can see that we're making a series of rally-based drops and drop-based rallies, right? We're cycling back and forth in the 60-minute time frame between low and high tide until eventually what happens is price drop base rallies, breaks out above the previous area of resistance and makes a basing area and then rallies away. Rally, base, rally, all right? So we're now we're in a rally base rally mode, right? Until price eventually returns to our area, there's our two blue lines where sellers were in control last time. And what has happened since then? Well, you can see that in the 60 minute time frame, we have stopped making rally based rallies. And it does look like we've now done a rally based drop. And what could be becoming another drop base drop. Now, this is why it's important for us to wait for candles to close before we make that distinction. If I go back to my daily chart, right, right, now we see we do see a bearish engulfing, right? But this daily candle has yet to close. We still need this candle to close. But what we're seeing here in the cycle of price is that our time frames are starting to line up together. Our higher time frame, our intermediate time frame, our daily time frame, and our lower time frame. And this is what we want to try to achieve. When we look at these cycles of price, as we look from higher to lower time frames, we want to see them when they all come into uh, concert with each other. And these are going to give us high probability opportunities, entries, and exits. All right, so I don't know what the dollar index is going to do. Certainly to me, it looks like we're in a bearish engulfing pattern on a daily time frame. Uh, on my weekly, we're probably right there at the top of the range, right? Again, a weekly candle is not going to close until Friday, right? We're kind of indecision here. Still a little bit of green, this candle could turn red. If it does turn red, then that would be a sign that we're in a rally-based drop mode. And if I go back down to my 60-minute time frame, certainly it looks like uh, we have broken back down below that area of um, resistance. Okay. All right. So that's kind of the big picture of supply and excuse me, um, cycle of price. I hope that you can kind of see uh, the, these characteristics or, you know, kind of see the pictures, the patterns. So let me go to another market that uh, you guys might be more familiar with. And I'll, I, again, I picked the futures market um, because I really do believe that the futures markets does give us a little better, uh, easier for us to look at. Um, candlesticks and candlestick patterns in this cycle of price. So again, I'm starting at the weekly, nearby weekly, three-year chart. And again, it's really easy now that I've described this to you to kind of see this cycle of price, right? Here's our rally base drop, drop base drop, drop base rally, rally base rally. And since then, what part of the cycle are we in in this weekly time frame. Yeah, we're in rally base rally mode. The market is still trending higher, right? A rally base rally is an uptrend confirmation. Now we do have some little micro cycles in here, but overall we are still continuing to make higher highs and higher lows. Now, what did we say would be the next cycle after a rally base rally, after price rises for a while, eventually it stops rising and it starts to fall or a rally base drop. But if we look at our weekly candles, do we see a candle formation that looks like a rally base drop? Not yet, not yet. If I go down to a daily time frame, again, what do we see? We see a 
trending market, a market that's continuing to go up. And right now, do we see a rally based drop? No, we don't. Matter of fact, what we see here is the price has based and now it looks like it's starting to rally again. So we're continuing with this cycle of price at the weekly and at the daily time frame. Now, before I move down to the 60 minute time frame and we really kind of dig into this, I also want to talk to you about how we can start looking for entries based on what cycle we're in or what phase we're in. So we're in the rally based rally phase. And I want you to notice that these corrections where we come back and test our trend line, notice that we come back and test the rally base rally that breaks out of a recent pivot high or the last high for price one higher. Again, here's that rally base rally that took price above this high right here and price came back and tested it. So what did price do? It came back and tested to make sure there were still buyers there and price jumped away. And you can see here we have a rally base rally where price has come back looks like two or three times and tested that and held that line. So buyers are still in control. And as far as I'm concerned, until we violate one of those rally base rally zones, this market is still in an uptrend. All right, so let's go down to a 60 minute time frame. Again, let me actually just go back here for a second and we're gonna look at, here's a three candle drop. There it is right there. That's definitely one of the formations that's in our folder. We'll come back and look at this. But I just wanna point out it's inside of this um, a green circle and I'm going to go down to a 60 minute time frame. There's that green circle, right? And inside of that green circle, this cycle that we saw the daily, right? Here we can see it play out rally base drop, drop base drop, drop base rally, rally base rally. So there it is, the whole cycle of price inside of a uh, 60 minute time frame. But also here, let me make sure you can see this. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Okay, and we can see over here, there is a little three candle drop right there. Okay, and three candle drops when price gets above the origin of the sell off are very strong confirmations that the market is in a very strong uptrend. And so we can see that price continued to go up once we got back above this uh, area of uh, resistance, okay? All right, so in my 60 minute time frame now, what do we see? Well, we kind of see that same thing we saw in the dollar index on the downside. Here we are in high tide, right? And the market is cycling back and forth between highs and lows inside of the 60 minute time frame, making that cycle of price drop base rallies to rally base drops. And each time price returns to those areas where buyers or sellers were more in control, you can see the market respected that. All right. So if I'm in a 60 minute time frame, right, and I find this as a trend, well, we would probably define this again, like we did with the dollar index, as a sideways trend, right? And sideways trends. are basing actions at higher time frames. There's our 60 minute sideways trend. And this is a basing action in our daily time frame. Now if I go back to the 60 minute time frame, right? We talked about cycling and we also talk about similarity or this idea of seeing the same price actions in all time frames. And notice what we're starting to see in the 60 minute time frame. Rally base rallies. Rally base rallies. Now, I would particularly like, especially when a market is making an all time high, I would like to see us take a big explosive movement out of our zone and we haven't done that yet. And I know there are some of you out there who are probably saying, 
other technical analysis that you're looking at, you know, maybe uh, we're overextended or you have a RSI or uh, stochastic diversions or uh, there's uh, the breadth of the market or the momentum of the market or the volume of the market doesn't give you a lot of confidence that uh, price is going to cycle higher, right? And I agree with you on all of that. But until my pictures tell me otherwise, until my big picture, my intermediate picture, and my lower time frame pictures start showing me rally-based drops and drop-based drops, I'm going to con still consider this market in an uptrend, right? And even if I go down to a five-minute time frame, and I'm going to squeeze this up a little bit for you. really make this nice and tight right five minute time frame right rally base rally rally base rally we're still making what higher highs and higher lows all right so what's important for us now is as long as we continue to make green candles as long as the market still goes up we're still in an uptrend even though we want to convince ourselves that we're at all-time highs and the market is overdue for a correction. Now, let me go back to this three candle drop. And inside of our um, webinars, we talked about chart patterns that traders need to understand. And one of the chart patterns we looked at was this one. And so what I said to you is that this is a usually a bottoming action and that can, this could be a sign of a very strong uptrend. And Elliott Wave Theorist will look at this, a picture like this and we'll talk about ABCs. Um, but what we can do is we can measure the length of the three candle drop, and that's what I've done here. And we can extrapolate from when price breaks above the third candle or the first candle of the three drop. Once it breaks above that, we can extrapolate. That's a projection of how far we should see price go. Now, I'm not predicting this is where the S&P is going to go. I'm just saying, based on this three candle drop, we are projecting to this value somewhere around 6,500 up to around 60, excuse me, 4,500 to 4,525. So that's our three candle target zone. Now. What I do notice, and this is kind of interesting in terms of seasonalities and other things that I've known from experience is, if I follow this trend line and I look to where this trend line intersects my target area, and I put a line here, down here, and I look to see when that would be in terms of time, notice that it happens in September 15th right now. And September 17th is a triple witching hour. So I'm not predicting this, but in a seasonality of the equities market, September can be a scary month. Usually there is some form of correction that comes to the stock market somewhere around September or October. It's just a seasonality of how the smart, that market, particular market works. So again, what I might do here is if I get this projection and I get into that 4,500 area and now we're into the middle of September where I'm anticipating a seasonal price change or trend change and I start seeing rally-based drops and drop-based drops through multiple time frames, that would give me onus that it says it's probably time to lock in some good profits or start and employing some defensive tactics to protect myself for a potential correction in the market. Now, I don't know how far the market could correct or how far a downtrend would go. I'm not, again, I'm not going to predict that. But if I went back and look at my weekly chart, certainly a 10% correction back to this little teeny gap here, around 44,000 or maybe even back to this last rally base rally where we broke out of a significant uh, former high, you know, 3,600, you know, that could be an area where price could fall back to based on just a simple 10% correction or 15 or 20% uh, correction. Again, I'm not predicting that, I'm just saying 
that's what we could look for if we start seeing rally based drops and drop based drops. Okay, so it's not all about futures. It's not all about um, actually. You know what I wanted to do was let me go back to the 60 minute. Uh, excuse me, the daily and why I advocate that you use uh, the futures markets, especially on these indexes, especially if you are trading um, uh, index type ETFs, right? Notice that our candles here are kind of not complete. We got a lot of gaps, right? Remember the stock market is only open for six and a half hours, right? So, you know, we're still seeing the same price action. It's just, there's a lot of gaps. We got to kind of use our imagination. That's why I think there's a benefit even though you might not trade futures markets, there's a benefit at looking at futures markets, especially when they relate to one of your ETFs, especially your index ETFs, all right? See, our candles are much more complete, right? Not a lot of gaps, okay. All right, so let me show you that it's not all about futures markets, right? Let's look at a very particular uh, stock, Again, I'm going to start at the weekly time frame. I'm going to make this nice and big for you. All right. So bear with me with the lines here. I'm going to tell you what these all represent. As we go to lower time frames, they're going to be more significant. But the, what the one line I want you to look at right now is this green line and notice this green line goes right through this red candle and this red candle at the weekly time frame is a bearish engulfing a very typical type of rally base drop candlestick formation when price changes direction or reverses there it is right there so anything right of this green line is now representative of price action after this weekly candle. The other areas I want you to concentrate on is this great green shaded area and these two little um, circles over here. These will represent where price comes back and challenges where sellers were in control. All right, I'm gonna go to my daily chart and there's that green circle and notice that at the daily, we still see a bearish engulfing rally base drop, followed by a drop base drop, drop base drop, drop base rally, rally base rally, gap up, that's a big rally, rally base drop. Okay. Now, this is where we can use the similarities of time frame analysis through all time frames when we start seeing the same patterns to give us some good probable entries. So I'm going to go to a 60 minute time frame. And there's our green circle. Now, notice that the 60 minute time frame is not in, it's not a bearish engulfing, right? kind of a pinchers formation or twins formation and then what we could say is a shooting star but both of these are uh, candlestick formations that tells us sellers are in control there's that gap away and then you can see price came back and filled that gap we do have a webinar on gap trading and this would have been a great example of waiting for the gap to fill where price returns, do I know where sellers are in control to take a short position? And you can see that price came back a second time, tested where our sellers were in control, and we'll go over here to the right and we'll see it actually tested two more times. Now, one of the other things that we've talked about in some of our webinars in the past is this importance of openings and closes, especially for candlesticks, but also in terms of philosophy of trading, that some of you might have heard the analogy that novices or retail traders open the markets, equity markets, and that professionals close it. So notice that on our red lines here, the time of day, this is at 3 p.m. This is this chart is in Chicago or Central Time. And so this red candle here is showing us sellers are in control, our professionals are closing the market on Pinterest and they are selling the market and the market is falling away. 
And then what we see is that we get a little bit of a contra trend price movement, right? Our retail traders who are making that mistake as price returns and fills the gap in that first morning session. And this would have been a great opportunity for us to take a short. Now, notice again, price returns to an area where we know sellers are in control. And it does that, comes back in, and then it falls away. And this is definitely a bearish engulfing, right? And that happened at three o'clock. Sellers came back, our professionals, are telling us that Pinterest is not going up any higher. Now notice, look, 9 a.m. the next day, price popped back up into that area. Could have gotten a short again. And a third time, right, the close, selling again. And both of these are candlestick formations that represent sellers. This is a little doji or a little um, uh, morning star, excuse me, evening star, right? And then what did price do? Well, look at what happened to Pinterest. Drop base drop, big, big invisible candle. And eventually it held right here on this blue line. Drop base, maybe drop base rally. Maybe starting to start a drop base rally. We don't know for sure yet. We'll have to wait for this can these candles to close. But notice this blue line here as I carried over here to the left is an area where Pinterest was recently in low tide. Here's your high tide, here's your low tide, right? So we can anticipate that maybe price is going to hold there. Now, if I go down to a, make this chart a little bit bigger, let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see it in terms of time of day. There we go, All right? Notice that our two times a day, 3 p.m. and 9 a.m., is the first rally base rally retest as price breaks this downtrend as we move from high tide to low tide, from low tide to high tide. And price came back and tested this blue line. That's what we're seeing over here. But now what is price doing? Let's go back to our daily. Price has based and now fallen again. What's it doing in the weekly? Price has based and starting to fall. So again, the importance of waiting for this market to close, right? It certainly looks like we might start another cycle of drop base drops. And so for, you know, I'm not a big candidate of sh shorting stocks, just because of the capital outlay and all that uh, nonsense. But certainly this might be an options strategy. And those of you who are options traders, right, this would be a beautiful $55, $45 put vertical spread. Now, I happen to know that this was trading, that per, put vertical spread was trading $1.80 yesterday. And just before I came on the air, it was trading around 220, so it already had moved up 40 cents in just one day, right? Now, I'm not predicting that Pinterest is gonna fall all the way to $45. All I'm just saying is that my higher time frame, my daily time frame, and now even my lower time frame are starting to show me that who's in control and who's in control? Well, it looks like sellers are in control again, and so they should push price uh, lower. Okay, so I do have um, one more example for you, and we're at around 45, 50 minutes into the presentation. I do see a couple questions here. So, Gene, let me pause here to read these questions. Are there any other questions that are popping up that are kind of common or something that you might want to comment about? Well, while you review the things that I've passed on to you, let me talk a little bit about the interactive chart that you've got up here. Uh, we do have a question John was asking about those vertical timelines. So if you use interactive charts on bar chart, uh, there are a number of drawing tools that you can add. And all of those vertical lines that, that um, John added, okay, he showed you how to access the tools menu via a right click. But John, can you close that for a moment, please? 
In the left side of John's chart, you see this tools bar, which is docked there. That's a quick way to access it. Uh, right, that first grouping are trend lines. If you just select a vertical line, you'll be able to draw that vertical line. And also John is now showing you the tools button at the very top. Uh, if you use that, you can also access the drawing tools. So that's, I guess, the um, the one general question I wanted to, to talk about. He's demonstrating interactive charts. If you are logged into your account, whether you are a free member or a Bar Chart Premier member, every single time you place a tool on the chart, like these vertical lines or the horizontal lines or the uh, little circles, the ellipses or text, we will save that in your account for the next time you come back to the chart. Awesome, okay. Gene. Awesome. And I'm going to go to another market, and I've already done this pre-work, and what Gene is telling you is you're going to see that all these little tools and things I've drawn, lines, they're all there, already there for me. So these are not not being created by bar chart, but they were being created by me, and they will stay there as long as I keep them there. The other thing you can do is over here on the right here is you can go up where it says clear, and this is an opportunity for you to clear studies. You can clear your tools or you can uh, clear them all. Now, just be careful. If you clear tools or studies, you're going to clear all your tools or all your studies. If you want to just clear one, you can right click on any individual one and then you can push the, the delete and that will clear those individual ones that you want to get rid of. Okay. Okay. So, one more thing, one more thing John, if I could. Yeah. Uh, John is also asking, how are you zooming in and out of the chart? So, you know, you've been demonstrating that a lot of, of zooming in to see the detail. So John simply using his cursor on the very, very bottom of the chart where the, uh, the dates are showing, that's her, your time axis, you just drag and drop it. Okay, so that's how you zoom in and out, drag and drop. Okay. Okay, cool, yeah. Yeah, play around with it. It's fun. It's easy. Most platforms, this is basically how you can uh, format or redesign your charts. All right. So here's a couple of questions I've gotten. First of all, Christopher asks, is there a typical amount of time that a basing might represent? No, Christopher, there isn't. It can be one candle. It could be multiple candles. It could be, you know, a, a basing action could just be a series of very small micro um, uh, cycles, right? A lot of, let's say I'm looking at a, a daily action, right? We looked at that in our S&P and our dollar action, but in a smaller time frame, we cycle back and forth between high and low tide, right? So that basin action could be several, several candles. Um, Dan says, uh, do you believe in a bearish engulfing candle? They must engulf the previous day candle. Yes. Dan, when we, if you watch the candlestick, understanding candlestick formations, that is the premise of an engulfing uh, candlestick formation. Now, there are other bearish type um, candlestick formations that represent a reversal in trends or rally based drops. All of them are uniquely different, but they're still sell telling us the same thing in this battle between buyers and sellers that sellers, buyers were in control and sellers attracted sellers and sellers end up overwhelming overwhelming uh, buyers. And then Diane asks, why 9 a.m. and uh, the market opens at 8 a.m.? So um, Diane, what we're really looking at here is I was looking at a 60 minute time frame. And yes, the stock market opens up at 9.30 Eastern time. But I'm looking at a 60-minute candle that is open to close. So at 9 a.m. on a east, excuse me, central time, that would encompass the 9:30 central Eastern time. I know this is getting confusing, which would be 8:30 central time. So the nine o'clock candle would have the opening in central time of the stock market. Does that make sense, Diane? Right, the nine o'clock candle that closed at nine o'clock Central Time has the 8:30 opening of the stock market. So you could go down a 30-minute if you wanted to look exactly at the opening price, but you know 
most of the time in the stock market, that first 30 minutes to 45 minutes of the market is where you see the market out of balance. That's when retailers are making those mistakes. And that's where our professionals are starting to make their plans for the day. So again, it's a generality. It depends on the trader in terms of how to find the time frame you want to go. You want to go down to five minutes, you can do that. I'm just using um, the 60 minute to do that. All right. Um, Roberto, as far as candlestick books, there is a lot of them out there. I don't, I don't think I can recommend, um, uh, any one particular. And Reggie finally asked, there are several formations. What formations are the most benefit for beginners? Reggie, I don't think there's any one that's greater than another. I think what, for most, uh, junior traders, uh, it's the ones that you can recognize, right? And bearish and golfings are very easy to recognize. Um, uh, morning stars, shooting stars. Um, if the three candle drop is a very rare candlestick formation, but when you see it, you know, that's one that you can uh, work with. All right. Um, let's see. G asks, do candlestick formations take on any different weight, whether it can be during the pre or after market hours or during regular hours? That's a great question, G. So listen, I would say that I would be more reliant on candlesticks that are being created during regular trading hours when the market is more active, especially for the equities markets. But in futures markets, in Forex, right, we trade 24 hours almost. So there is this um, pre-market time, you know, so if you wanted to look for a window of opportunity, you know, in terms of East Coast time, I would say between 8 and 11 for your futures markets. If you're trading Forex, you know, European markets are very active in their morning session. So if we're here in the U.S., you know, if I'm on the East Coast, maybe some what we would consider pre-market, you know, 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock in the morning. So, yeah, it depends on the market, depends on the contract we're trading, and it also depends on the where is price going to be influenced the most by the financial centers that are around the world? For instance, the Japanese yen, you know, maybe we would look at the morning session in Japan, in, which would be our pre-opening, pre-market opening, as looking for better supply or demand or these candlestick formations. So great question, G. All right, so let me move on because I am getting to the top of the hour. I did want to go to crude oil just real quickly here. And again, you know, if I go to my weekly chart, right, what do we see, right? There's our cycle of price. There's our rally base rally, a couple of little micro waves in there. We go to, excuse me, let me go back here for a second, weekly, right? And you can see that we made a nice little hangman, right? That's telling us sellers are back in the market and price moved away, right? That was the hangman was in the weekly, but on the uh, daily, right? Rally base drop, right? This is kind of a, uh, is a com is more like, uh, it's a combination piercing line and Harami, uh, not engulfing, right? Didn't take it out on the upside. But again, another rally base drop. Here's your cycle of price, right? Rally base drop, drop base drop, drop base rally, came back to the origin of where, you know, our sellers were at a higher time frame, made a rally base drop. Again, as I go down into lower time frames, there you go, rally base drop, drop base drop, drop base drop. Notice that in the 60 minute time frame here is that small cycle price, the small wave that came back and tested our drop base drop and made a rally base drop. So again, if this price was going up and you thought it was a selling opportunity, but you were afraid to step in front of this freight train of price rally, all you would have to do is wait for the confirmation, the price picture that we're looking for, a rally base drop. But in this case, right, nice engulfing pattern, right? Big engulfing pattern, right? Okay, now what has price done, right? Our cycle of price drop base drop and drop base rally, but now the drop base drops are not holding and price is starting to 
rally base rally out. Now we do see a couple of drop base rally base drops, right? Kind of all equal level, right? So where could we be in the 60 minute time frame? We could be starting to start a cycle of rally base rallies, right? Might be a buying opportunity moving forward, right? Again, we need to wait for this candle to close. And before I came on this morning, uh, this was still a red candle. And that's an importance why we don't just jump in. We still need to wait for those candles to close to give us greater confidence. But in terms of where could this price rally to? Well, maybe this drop base drop right there. And if I go to a 60 minute time frame, right in this area here, where well, we haven't tested yet, around seventy dollars, seventy dollars and sixty cents. Okay, all right. Uh, maybe this one too, seventy dollar here. Okay, all right. So I just wanted to show you crude, and so let's do this. Let's go back to our slides. Let's get rid of this. All right. What are some takeaways for us? Candlesticks are these pictures of price, these battles between buyers and sellers, bulls and bears. Who's in control? Right? The significance of waiting, right? We got to wait for the candles to close to help us confirm or tell us we have these trends. But also what I showed you is that you can use these opening and closing prices in these time frames, these multiple time frames, as looking for entries and potential exits, right? Analyze price movements in the proper context. What does that mean? Big picture, right? I know a lot of junior traders make a lot of trading decisions on very small time frames, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, right? Do yourself a favor, take that extra step, take that step back, take that step, two step backs, right? Think about it like this. Remember our beach example? I'm standing on the beach and the waves or the water line is ex exactly halfway between the high tide mark and the low tide mark. And I'm going to make a bet or I'm going to put market at risk, money at risk, based on the little wave that rolls over my foot in the next five minutes? No. I want to wait patiently when I know my water or my waves is at the high tide mark or at the low time low tide mark ask yourself what phase is price in the cycle of price all right so i hope you guys enjoyed today's session if you do enjoy these sessions and you're interested in about learning about more about what bar chart offers uh, we do have a free basic subscription that you can use also um, we have a lot of premium tools we talk about uh, in a lot of our webinars and you can try those out for free and so I would encourage you to do at least the basic uh, membership and uh, give the premium a, a shot all right uh, anything you want to add Jane before we end well, why don't we talk about uh, next week's session? Oh, very good. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. So back in our free webinars, and actually you can see there's a little uh, um, chart over there. So next week we're going to talk about, we're going to do a little bit different. We're going to take a little time off. We've been really talking about some advanced concepts the last few weeks. Uh, we're going to take a little step back and we're going to look at, how bar chart can help us as traders, how bar chart can do the work for us to help us um, manage our time better, to help us employ our trade plans. And we're going to look at um, what we call the end of day reports. So these reports that are available to us so that I can do my diligence, I can do my homework on my time, right? Not necessarily when the markets are open. And we have a variety of different types of reports that are available to you. Some are informational and other ones are 
actionable. And so I'm going to show you what those are. And I'm also going to show you which ones I use and how I use them. So uh, come and join us next week. And I think you'll enjoy that one as well. Um, at this point, I would like to say, you know, stay safe out there, the best of health and the good of all trading. And as always, we do thank you for coming and joining us for these uh, webinar sessions. And I also want to thank you for using barchart.com. Uh, we're glad that you're here and hope that you can uh, join us again for a future session. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.